guys, Jeff Allen off the gridiron. Well, welcome back to my channel. Obviously, uh, if you've never been here for, before, uh, my name is Jeff, and this is a channel dedicated to all things passionate of mine off the football field, hence the title Off the Gridiron. One of the big things I'm involved with is uh, uh, and invested in is the, the world of bushcraft and certainly DIY. So the combination of those two things has me doing a lot of things in the outdoors, making my own gear, doing some uh, gear reviews, and always thinking and practicing uh, kind of new and creative ideas to use, uh, certainly in the woods. One of the things I'm working on today is I have a, an old duck decoy, just your standard plastic duck decoy that's not shot up but needs a new paint job. And uh, I want to turn this into a, a, a bit of a motion decoy. So what I'm uh, working on is, uh, came to me the other night, like this thought I've never seen before on YouTube, is to create a, uh, a motion decoy using a cat of a cat toy ball and this oscillates that has a USB charged motor inside and it kind of oscillates around on its own and I'm thinking if I put this uh, into my decoy into the open core of the decoy perhaps put it inside a Ziploc bag to keep it waterproof it might just add a little bit of movement on those really quiet mornings that in your uh, in your spread so that's what I'm working on thanks for joining me stick around and uh, we'll see if it works Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. So after I got looking at this, I think if I uh, open it up as low as I want and have this whole kind of wing section open up, I think it's just too big and unnecessary. Uh, so what I'm gonna, what my plan is now is to take uh, just a circle, take a circle pattern at the highest point on the back, and just take something. I don't know. This is just some kind of a uh, kind of a galvanized reducer that's just big enough to accommodate the ball and use that as a template on the back and then instead of having a hinge uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, maybe attach some kind of a, uh, a sealant or a, some kind of a weather stripping on the bottom of this circle I'm going to try to cut it in one piece and then uh, I can see the circle doing some kind of a, a pivot open and slide open like that uh, whereas I'm not worried about uh, any particular kind of hinge and flap. I'm not really sure yet, but uh, that's my thought right now. I'm going to start small and uh, cut the, try to get a, a hole traced out, and then some figure out some way to cut that out, whether it be a, a pilot hole and and uh, little scroll saw, a jig saw, I guess. Maybe a hot knife. We'll see. I'll be repainting this this dock later, I think, so I'm not too too worried about leaving any marker. There we go, something like that. Then we're gonna try to cut that out. Okay, we had a looking around. Uh, I didn't have a Dremel. And uh, I, I think trying to use the uh, kind of jigsaw would make a just chewed up mess uh, of the cutting out the hole. So I came up with another idea. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, I'm going to use a metal soup can uh, of a similar dimension. And actually, this is a doesn't matter metal. This is a cream cream corn can, but it doesn't matter. It's about the right diameter. So I'm going to take this can and I'm going to heat it up with a torch and see if I can just melt the hole right through. It should be a nice clean hole. Uh, it's going to be a little, a little stinky, but I think that's uh, going to be the best bet. So I'm going to pull this paper off and get my torch out, get a pair of uh, 
heavy gloves and uh, put some heat to this and see if we can cut through that. In fact, what I might try to do is, I'm not sure, I might try to get that lip off the can so it's a little, little easier, but that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to melt, melt away the hole in the side of the, the top of the decoy. Okay, we'll just take the lid off and we get, uh, get our gloves on here. So we'll grab the decoy by the head and just uh, you always want to just practice what you're going to do so when everything's happening it's not uh, it's not going to be a complete gong show <laughs> Yes! Look at that! Alright, we're going to let that cool for a second. And uh, I'm going to open up the garage a little stinky. Perfect! I love it! I love it! It totally worked! Look at that! Right in the top of the decoy. Perfect little patch. We can clean those edges up. And that will go back on there without too much problem at all. That's going to be excellent. Let's try. We're going to try the decoy in inside. There's lots of room for it to roll around. Okay, you guys are going to see this. So we're going to turn the decoy, the uh, motion ball on. You see this? It is rolling around freely in there. Look at the movement. I'm actually I'm barely barely holding on. In the water, that would that would give so much movement. Exactly what I wanted, just to give it that little extra motion. Okay, so we're just going around the outside edge of the decoy, the, the decoy itself, the hole, with a knife, and it's pretty uh, melted plastic, pretty, pretty, pretty brittle, and this is a sharp knife. Oops, we've got around the outside of the uh, the cutaway. And trimmed off all the little edges on that as best we can. I could take it to the grinder or use a sandpaper file, but that's that's pretty good. And just gonna catch a few, few of the little melted pieces on the inside. Now we'll try to orient this the way it was and feather pattern matches like so and we'll try to figure out some way to put this back on so it either makes makes a, a flap or I'm not sure if it's going to uh, swivel open like this but I'm going to put something on the back of this a little oversized so it creates a bit of a at least a bit of a gasket or seal to, to keep some of the water up, some of the water out. It is uh, the highest point in the decoy, so it should, if it's not too rough, it should ride obviously pretty high, lots of clearance in the water. And looking at it now, I've pr I probably could have 
made in the hole a little further back to really have it nice and high, but that's what we that's what we got. Like that. So let's go rummaging and see what we can use for a some kind of a, a gasket or an oversized hole for that to, to that to work. Okay, we've got a few different uh, few different parts to work with here. We've got some uh, silicone, and uh, yeah, it was actually <laughs> just gooping out the side here. I'm not sure if I can make some kind of a, a seal a seal with this. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's only a little bit left in the tube and it, it uh, the nozzle is froze right up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around the inside. It's, it's clear and it's waterproof. And I'm going to take just a gob at a time. See if I can make some kind of a, a raised edge here for a, a bit of a seal. Obviously, if I had a fresh tube of silicone, I could have just run a bead around the inside pretty easily. But I didn't have it. You gotta do. You gotta make do. Make do with what you do have. I think that's the that's the fun part. That's the fun part for me. Anybody can go to the go to your local store and buy the buy a motion decoy, right? doesn't make that much sense to me where I could have a good good time doing it in an experiment and uh, yeah, at the end of the day if it uh, if it works as good as the one in the store then you know you might be on to something and that's why we make these videos to show the show each other show each other how to do things Things what we may have thought of or may not have thought of. So now what I'm doing, I'm going around the east side. I'm just kind of trying to blend it in a little bit so it's not quite so so chunky, and it probably adheres to the um, the feathers, the feather markings on there. And when it sets, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to just grab this. Grab this piece and lift it off fairly, fairly carefully, so not to pull away the, uh, the silicone here. And then I'll have a pretty, pretty good seal. I think I'll still use the, um, I think I'll still use the Ziploc bag to put the uh, cat toy in, just to keep it. You know, because it is electronics, right? You can't just hope for the best. And this is a decoy that um, I'm, I'm not going to like throw in. This would be a, a purposely sit and, and uh, planted decoy. Maybe put it on a separate string away from my other uh, decoys in my spread. And that way, I can pull it in and out as I need to. There we go. So we're going to let that cure up and uh, come back to see how, uh, how it works. We'll probably take it inside and it will cure up a little faster. Take the pressure off that. While we're here, it's a good idea to check your decoy for any, uh, any, uh, any other holes. 
and holds it uh, kind of sharp. A little piece of uh, decoy line on there. I'm going to pull all this extra line off the bottom. We're not going to be using that right away. I'll just keep it handy and then we can always uh, put a new weight on there and reuse this line. There we go. I'll leave that piece there. Probably got uh, oh, at least seven, eight feet there, which is enough for the shallows that we uh, went in. Yeah, that is, that is uh, tightening up there now. Okay, we'll just let it sit, take it inside, set it by the register where it can, uh, and then uh, we'll show you the next steps. Okay, now that the seal is dry, I've left it for a few days. It's a real nice little rubber seal. It really um, kind of closes up quite well. I want to hinge it off the, the back here somehow. And I think what I'm going to do is drill a hole on either side on the lid and then on the inside and then this seal will be able to lift up and just flop and pivot out of the way and then I can just press fit it back into where it belongs. So I'm going to attach a little bit of a pair, piece of paracord to either side and that'll act as my hinge. Okay, a little kind of paracord hinge and uh, just flips out of the way. I've left the extra tail on there if I want to adjust it later. This is just a test fit. But uh, it does seat down in the, kind of like it's almost like a silicone gasket. And, uh, quite tight. And I think that'll, uh, that'll work. And then the, uh, when I repaint this duck, it'll all blend in so we won't see you know, a glaring piece of paracord out of there, so there we go. Okay, we found ourselves a little Ziploc bag. We're gonna zip it up and squeeze some of the air out just so it fits in through the hole. It's a fairly tight fit. Now we're gonna turn it on and uh, see if it, it does roll around in the bag slightly. Lots of movement even through the bag. So we're going to take this and uh, put it down inside the uh, decoy. Right through there. So we're going, to, uh, we're going to start it first and slide it in there. Tuck the bag in. Here rolling around in there, and then we'll uh, put our seal on. And we're just going to start by sitting the duck on the counter and see what happens. It's moving, it's tossing around there now, look at that. And certainly on a calm day, when there's no movement in the water, not too bad. Lots of vibration in the water at least, right? Look at that. That's inside the Ziploc bag, there's a chance it might roll a little better out of the bag. But look at that movement. That's a lot of movement, it's waterproof. On a calm day, that's that's uh, that's instant free. That's free action for sure. I'm gonna take it out of the bag just to see how it works. I'm 
nuts with no Ziploc bag, but then you run the risk of getting excess water in there. Very random. jamming up in the, in the front end I might put a little block of foam or something even glue a little ridge of glue across the bottom on the inside so it doesn't roll forward too far well folks I can't say I've uh, videotaped too many <laughs> too many videos in my bathroom but uh, this one's come to an end looks like the, uh, the homemade kind of motion decoy is gonna work and it's all thanks to a little $12 uh, electric cat toy that's rechargeable. Uh, what we're finding is we can put inside a, uh, a Ziploc bag if, we're, if we think our decoy is going to, going to leak. But it uh, looks like our, our seal is going to work really well. Certainly hold the cap in place. And from there, we'll uh, be able to set it in the water, anchor it down. And... Uh, Again, the purpose of this decoy is certainly not during the wind. You might want to go out and uh, pull it off your spread if uh, the wind starts picking up, but certainly early morning, a little bit of motion might uh, bring in the odd flyer. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to smash that like, subscribe, and share button, and uh, we'll definitely see you next time. All the best. Enjoy your outdoors. Bye for now.